We spent a week with two tank crews from Charlie 164 Armor. So I think they've done an amazing job. I am proud of those guys, very proud. Just getting ready, preparing for the shot. To get a shot to go to the Southern Cup, I have learned probably more in these last few weeks than any other training exercise I've done combined. We met Team Cannonarchy and Team Count Tracula, and they went head to head for six weeks. I'm getting the chance to represent an entire division. I'm really grateful for the opportunity. It's, uh, it's really humbling. Competition brings out excellence. That's driving us. We're driving them, and uh, it's, it's all in the spirit of competition to, to make a better team. These guys want to be the best. I'm ready. I'm, I've been waiting for this moment. But in the end, only one team gets to go to the Sullivan Cup. They've wrapped their head around this. We're getting an opportunity here to show that we are the best in the world. You get to play on the big boy platform. This is the Super Bowl of tanks. They want this. This isn't your mama's table six uh, qualification. And this is, a, this is a test to get after the best tank crew in the United States Army. We're gonna push everybody to the limits. We're gonna make it physically demanding. We're gonna test your, your cognitive skills when you get out on the sticks exercises to make sure you know how to do the basic functions it takes to be a tanker. And then we're gonna make sure you can come out of here and hit what you shoot at. Sergeant Fauntleroy's crew was picked to represent the third ID. The way the Sullivan Cup works is you show up, they issue you a tank, and you use it to compete in a series of events for points. So the only points you care about are to get into the top four. After that, it, nobody cares about your points because the shoot-off is the only thing that matters. The shoot-off determines who is the Sullivan Cup winner. So take us through the competition, it, briefly, the, the different stations, what they do, and, and how to get to that last phase. Well, first they have competition, which they call day zero. It was Sunday. That was the armor crewman proficiency test. It starts off with an ammunition lift. It, that, to get 100 points, you need to do it 45 times, and I, I only can do it 36. Come on, Martin! Come on! Come on! Come on! One more! Ah. Track block shuffle, it's 20 meters. You take 10 track blocks, you move them back and forth. Then you have a cable drag for 15 meters. You, pick, you drag the cable, pick it up, and you just run back. Then you have a road wheel roll for 240 meters, basically a baseball diamond. And you, have, you finish off with a one mile run and they posted the second best crew score, so we finished in second place. The mounted sticks lane comprised of a land navigation course, and there were five stations within the land navigation course. The time begins now. The first station was their start point, and that was prepare for combat. They prepped their vehicle, got ready, and then they moved out, and OC followed them. And then things got interesting. And it's interesting. Their tank broke down. Basically, we started our movement. Um, once we got up here to this intersection, uh, we was doing a little tactical pause just to make sure our bearings were good. And a lot of times, sometimes with certain problems that the tank may run into, it'll self abort itself. Pretty much like a, I guess, self preservation, if you will. Essentially, it was the tank's check engine light coming on. Yeah, th this is where the fault showed up again. It's not showing up. There it goes. It's back. So they did some troubleshooting. I think we good. And eventually, they had to pull over and just wait for another tank. These aren't their tanks. They literally jumped on this tank a couple of hours ago. So tanks break down. It is what it is. Hey, grab the 50. They eventually had to transfer all their gear, and they got back to work. They dealt with the, uh, the little uh, three-hour hiccup 
and then they moved on. They got to their next station, um, which was maintenance. They had to break and replace a two block section of track. They got beat on time on that one. They still got 60 points because they're doing pretty well. They found all the rest of their land nav points and it, it got really late. It was about 20, 100, 20, 30. By the time they got to that, the medical sticks land. Just run over there. Black six, black six, white three. He's not breathing and he's showing no signs of life. And they executed, got 88 points on that, did really well. Station five president. We went, to, we went up to station five, which is again at the cantonment area. And they did vehicle ID and that was, that was pretty rough. But they kicked the fourth station right in the seat. It was uh, Occupy a BP, did really well, and they got 100 points on their land nav as well, so. At the end of the day, they had 811 out of 1,000 points. And going into the gunnery, they were in 10th place out of 16 crews. The digital multi-purpose range complex at Fort Benning is impressive, and it'll test any tanker. This is not like any other range that I've ever been on. It is not a bowling alley. It is not flat terrain. And so it's forcing these crews, and it forces our future leaders, to completely expand everything that they know about tank gunnery. Gunnery is one of the crew's strengths. And this is where all that degraded training at Fort Stewart hopefully would pay off. Family members perform if at any point during the day. Uh, Right now, they'll do the PC tank RPG team, degraded mode, and then they'll do their call for fire. Who you'll have coming up right now, as you see approaching the BP, is 164 Armor. So if we have any 164 Armor fans right here, here you, here you go. Your chance to cheer for them. Identify tank, tank. Oh, drive, move up. Drive, fire, keep the adjust. On the way. On, driver back, he's in deck. I overheard you um, talking about 164. What yeah. was it you said about that? They had, they were having mechanical issues. They took them back to the room. Nothing they could fix out there. No. So our crews out there, um, they got one round off, and now they've had a malfunction. What we don't know is, is, uh, is if they're going to be given an alibi, which means if it was a, a fault that was uh, something they couldn't prevent, they'll give them an alibi, and this won't count against them. If it's something that they they caused. It, it, it counts against them. So not a great start to the gunnery, but it's it's what happens. It's it's part of being a tanker. And I think that, you know, what they learned through all the training is that you've got to be able to adapt to this. So we're waiting to find out what's going to happen. Well, if I came out, I swear this was yet another setback, but our guys put their time to good use to make sure they were ready if they get another shot. Yeah, that mound is gone. Try it again. So we got good news today. Our team found out they got an alibi. And that means that when the round got stuck in the breach, it was determined that it wasn't the crew's fault. So that means they got to start fresh. And they went out and they shot really well, took second place on all the teams, and that's kind of like breathing new life into them. So we're here now at 10 o'clock, and our crew's actually out on the range doing a night fire. We also heard you guys took second in the day run? Second today? highest score in the yeah. day run? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You did a good run on the night? night. Uh, Could have been better. I just trusted in my TC more. I couldn't identify a truck and troop target, but he could, so. Pretty van again. It is what it is, I mean. I think Corona's beating himself up a little bit. He, um, they had a, their last engagement was, uh, they had, they, they fire off some flares to simulate that they're being fired on. And, and he, he didn't see them. They're in it to win it, and they're they're working through the the challenges, you know. And tomorrow's the last day to give it their all and see where the cards lay after that. Think think about the crew that wins this thing when the, when they go home and they turn around and say, you know what, we won this, and this is how we did it. No way. No no no, they're they're in third place, man. 
they had, they came up from third to, from tenth to third. But they 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 got second best last night. Wow. Back on the map. Back on the map. Heard the good news, man. Yes, we're here. Yeah. So today you just gotta go do what you do. Yeah. Three got three engagements. Three engagements to solidify our position in the top four. And uh it's game one. I know you're excited, but but you know, having followed you guys, we are we're just we're stubborn. You know, going into the final gunnery, they were confident, they were focused. You know, barring any major malfunction, they should make the top four. Uh, looking at that, I don't have any affirmative things to say that why you miss those targets. If you're good at reading facial expressions, their faces speak volumes. Four seconds from when you moved up to engage, getting a doubtful left. Over it, on target two at 14, they back down at 16. Phrases like doubtful left and over or short are not what a tanker wants to hear in an AAR. They got an over on target three. It means they missed. Points on the first engagement, zero and zero on the next two engagements. They've okay, given you a total for the day, 50 points. And that's out of a possible 300. All right, I'm going to put you guys on a little break. Sergeant First Class Matt Nigren delivered the news with as much encouragement as he could. The wait now was to see if they'd go home. No news is good news right now. We're waiting on two more crews to finish their ARs and the final scores to come in to notify you on the points. That's how tight this competition's getting. What's the field looking like? I can't say. Okay. I'm just gonna tell you, no news right now is good news because that means we're not sending you, we're not sending you out the door right now. All right, um, we are back at the uh, hotel and we are waiting for news. Uh, today was a crazy day. It was a roller coaster ride. Uh, when we arrived this morning, uh, our guys that we knew were in 10th place. Uh, and it's actually on the way out that we were checking the, the Facebook site and found out that uh, because of their night gunnery, they had moved to third place. Um, so the last phase was today and that was their last day gunnery. And um, they did not do well. So. You know, we're just, we're wait, waiting to hear, um, you know, whether they make the top four, because the top four is where they need to be to be able to compete in the gunnery tomorrow. And, uh, and if we don't hear tonight, then, you know, we'll just find out on, wait a minute. Oh, they said they might text us tonight, so give me a sec. This, this could be it. I think everybody who is still in the Army has an obligation to make sure that we continue to be adaptive uh, and innovative and continue to, to strive for excellence. So if we can instill that in our junior ranks and the soldiers that are coming through this competition, think about that 16 crews that now can go home to 16 different places and talk about what it takes to be the best here. So there was a tie for fourth place, which means five crews went to the shoot off and our guys they missed it by one shot. I have a better picture of exactly what we need to do to truly become uh, more proficient armor crewmen. We're, bad, we're a bad tank crew. I learned, I learned that we're better than we thought we were. Really, this competition is about seeding excellence or planting the seeds of excellence in the tank community. A great honor to come down here and compete for the best. And I mean, I'll be back in two years. I'm, I'm going to win in two years. That's, that's what I'm taking out of his motivation to come back. It's a great experience. I mean, in my eyes, it's a once in a lifetime thing. I mean, it's not every day that you're going to go somewhere and have a best tank competition and your name just so happen to come pop up. Any team that goes is exposed to the training and all these other great tank crews and the competition that make them better tankers as a whole. Yeah, you have a winner, but everybody that comes is better for it. It helped our resilience a lot overall. It helped my resilience a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm a resilient, pretty resilient person before this, but this made it. This made me even stronger with this competition. I was honored to be in a position to give the best of the best a run for the money. I was honored to be in a position where the best of the best were like, oh man, we gotta watch out for those guys from 3rd ID. When you tell stories like this, you always hope your team's gonna win, and our guys didn't. But I wouldn't have it any other way because what we saw is the level of resiliency and that these guys, no matter what, they kept running hard after their goal. I mean, that's what it's about. It's about not quitting. It's about perseverance. 
and they showed us the best of that. 